My name is Keith Oliver. I'm 56 years of age. I was a head teacher of a large primary school in Canterbury, where I'd been head for 11 years, and this was part of a career which had spanned 35 years in education as a teacher and as a local education authority advisor. About two and a half years ago, I experienced a series of unexplained falls and feeling wobbly as if I was walking on a boat all the time and uh, felt much greater fatigue and generally speaking had a feeling of being unwell. We thought perhaps it was an ear infection. So I went to the GP who uh, examined my ears and said there was no sign of an infection but gave me antibiotics just in case. I uh, took the course of antibiotics and there was no difference, no, no improvement. So we went back to the doctor who did it for some further investigation uh, with my balance and asked me some various questions about my health generally and sent me for an MRI scan. An appointment was then rushed through to see the neurologist to get the results of the scan. I didn't suspect anything, didn't think anything more of it and he, rather out of the blue, said to my wife and myself that he suspected that the scan suggested uh, that it could be early signs of dementia, uh, which had not previously been mentioned by the GP or by anyone else and wasn't really on our radar, so it was a shock. We came away from that appointment with the uh, neurologist, shaken but determined to see things through and clung in a sense to the point that at this stage it was only suspected. It was, it was um, nothing was confirmed it was a suggestion that it could be dementia. <laughs> Amongst the early symptoms which I experienced were difficulties at work with regards to meeting deadlines, which previously hadn't been a problem. As a head teacher, I'd always operated with an open door policy and had been very easy with multitasking and, and so on and so forth. That became a severe problem. I was finding that I could only concentrate on one thing at one time. Um, answering the phone became a challenge. Retrieving information was becoming difficult and retaining information. Not memory as such, that came a little bit later. It was more taking information in and then bringing it to my fingertips later. Things were becoming more difficult, generally speaking, and uh, I had to confide also in, in colleagues, close colleagues at school, because I was determined I wanted to carry on working for as long as I possibly could. Um, so the deputy was brought into my confidence, the secretary was brought into my confidence, but no one else, because at this stage it was still very early in the investigation as well and nothing was confirmed. I managed to carry on working until the end of the summer term, which I was pleased about. Rosemary used to come up, my wife used to come and uh, collect me from work some lunch times and we'd go off-site and have something to eat and I'd have a snooze in the car and then go back to work in the afternoon. So all these things were happening and, and staff were getting concerned. There was a clear raising of anxiety in the school around my health, but no one, one knew what the situation was apart from the two or three people who I'd confided in. We then had the summer holiday and during that time I reflected upon my position and realised that it was untenable. Um, and at the start of the uh, September term I went in for two days because I was determined to start the new year off with staff and children and to open the school up and then seeing the GP he signed me off for two months which in turn became six months at the end of which uh, a diagnosis was confirmed and um, on April the 1st uh, my career of 35 years in teaching came to a close. People do ask me that, people ask how, how does the dementia affect you now? And I suppose one way of describing it is to, to use the analogy of the weather. Most days are, are sunny days for me and I maintain a clear outlook and life is pretty good. But other days it's a bit cloudy and I will come in and out of being able to function effectively. But there are a few days where the fog descends and um, 
They're not good days. And, and one way that that shows itself in me is, is, is word retrieval. Um, when it's a sunny day, I can hold a conversation with very little difficulty. Um, on a foggy day, finding those words is, is a real challenge. There are times when I feel isolated in a conversation. Being part of a conversation with more than one person is often challenging. Having to listen to two or three people talking at one time in any group of uh, group discussion is very difficult. It's easier on a one-to-one, -one, but if maybe there's five or six of us talking, even if it's just general chit-chat in the family, it's difficult to follow it. Uh, and, and one can easily become isolated in that situation and withdrawn and disengaged from what's going on. Background noise is often a challenge. Um, I find filtering it out quite difficult. Um, if, if I'm talking to somebody and there's uh, a radio programme on or something, I can't, I can't cope with the conversation with that background noise. Watching television for me is, is one of the ways in which I, I do relax. But following storylines is also quite difficult in there. I do find it difficult to absorb what's happening and who's saying what to whom. And uh, I do often have, have to ask my wife to tell me, you know, because I've missed bits, although I've been looking at the screen, it hasn't gone in. Uh, I've not absorbed the dialogue. But there's a counter side to that as well, because often in the summer there's lots of repeats on the television. And for me, repeats are new because I've got no recall of having seen them before, even if I did. So every cloud has a silver lining, I guess. I do also use the computer and um, I, I do email to friends, I do research on the computer. I always have done. Uh, I used to be reasonably proficient on the computer, but it's become more frustrating in recent times. I'm much slower on the computer and some of the um, skills I used to have uh, do now come and go. Um, and typing long emails is much more draining than it used to be. Something I've noticed, particularly in the last five or six months, is that um, there's been a heightening of my emotions when engaged with either a book or a film or a TV programme or a piece of music, which previously I would perhaps have had an emotional attachment to and enjoyed, but now I read a book which, which may touch my soul or watch a film that's, that's got an emotional uh, kick to it, and, and, you know, I'm in floods of tears. So I'm less able now to control that than, than I used to be. And I, I, I have noticed that. I feel I have a, a window of opportunity, if you like, to speak to people about dementia and to feel as though I can make a contribution towards raising public awareness. I think one reason why my health has uh, maintained at a reasonably good level since being diagnosed is my determination to try and live life positively, to do things which I enjoy and find interesting, and to live life to the full, which enables me to remain as well as possible. Hmm.